Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 15, fuck, 15 of the Strobing Book Vlog. I'm your host for the week, Ron Lynch, and these are my lovely co-hosts, the amazing Missy Davis and the gorgeous Ariana. I'm amazing. You're gorgeous. <laughs> you I'm ugly. You're dumb. <laughs> the sexy, beautiful, brilliant, amazing ladies that are the eye candy that you actually come for because nobody wants my fat, bald, that nasty ass self. Nasty. So I'm just a fat, drunk guy. These are what you come for. Look at those eye candy. Look at that. Boobs, boobs. That's all that matters. It's boobs. <laughs> it's got boobs. Yes, but their boobs are much nicer, <laughs> not covered in fur. Fur boobs. How do you know? That's right. <laughs> she couldn't flash them, and then I'll be the judge. Yeah. Damn. I anyway. have a rope for right here. Good. You know, I would like to see that, like, just <laughs> fur, just like a fur kini. I mean, like, I guess that would be, like, way too hot this time of year. Be jumping in the pool with a fur kini. It'd be so gross and matted. <laughs> well, you gotta brush it. I mean, it's just in the pool, you got to. Are we talking, like, my chest here level of fur, or, like, you know, a cat or a dog level of fur? Cat or dog level. Yeah. That'd just be hilarious then. Mm -hmm. That'd be, I don't know. So, um, let's see. Um, the mystery bear of the week is not the mystery bear I intended. I will acquire that and bring it up here probably next week and it'll be a double mystery bear because this one's hosting and they won't know what their mystery bear is and that'll make it more fun for me. So I'm kind of stealing some thunder, but they'll appreciate it. All right, stolen thunder sounds fun. So, uh, let's see. How the fuck are we doing today, guys? Doing all right. All right, yeah. Um, better than yesterday. Better than yesterday? That's so, a decent, so, I don't know, boring past week, but it was decent. Yeah. Last week was great. Yeah. Like, it feels like it should be Thursday by now, but. It's been so fucking long of a day. I don't get it. Yeah. Like, yesterday went on forever, and then today went on forever. Finish your pre-beer, girl. I'm trying. <laughs> well, I had, last week, I only, they only scheduled me, like, one day. And then that particular day, I was like, damn it, I meant to take that day off. And I told my boss, I was like, hey, I have that concert I'm going to. I um, forgot to get that day off. I said, I like, asked for Monday off, but I don't work Mondays. So he took me off. He's like, he couldn't get me traded, because I told him I was going to trade, so I couldn't get you traded. So I don't work at all. I was literally back to work like two weeks after being off on vacation and COVID. I was like, off for two weeks, back on for two weeks, and then off for a week. And then I got a full week this week, but next week I only have 12 hours, and I'm just kind of like, oh, what to do with it? It makes for a long time, but it's really nice. I can't bitch. I just do a lot of Ubering and lifting and bitch about my passengers. Which is funny. I've discovered that Uber's got better passengers because I haven't done Lyft forever, and I did Lyft the past two weeks, and it's just, it's a train wreck. All right, so... While I'm trying to motivate somebody to finish your uh, pre beer, I can finish it later. Okay. Yeah, she can just let us sit, right? We're, we're going to have our first one, which is an Innocent Gun Barrel Aged Original, which That's is amazing. Scotch Whiskey Barrel Ale. And it is. They're going to be trashed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, six and a half percent. Oh, I thought that was the, the high one. Nope, nope, that would be the mystery. Gotcha. And pretty simple little label, but some real nice detail in the bottle. I like that. You want to take a look at that? Sure thing. Pretty little nice scotch thing. whiskey uh, always sounds good. Yeah, I think it sounds pretty good. It's like some classic type artwork. Right. I just really like the uh, effort they went to get their models. Their model actually has like the Innocent Gun original actually emblazoned into a, the model. It's yeah. not just a generic beer bottle. It's a, an actual belongs to them beer bottle. Like, I couldn't recycle this for my own homebrew alcoholic shit. Nice and golden. Yep. And if we do drink all this, there's a couple more in the fridge. If we want more of uh, this particular one. Ariana's all like, yes, please. Mm -hmm. I'm all about the... And... Fruity. Fruity. Is this supposed to even be? It smells weird. Just yeah, an ale. Weird. Whiskey barrel aged, Scotch whiskey barrel aged ale, so. Second. Like, like 
liquor, but almost a little fruity too. And well, the liquor is going to be the uh, the whiskey barrel. The second sniff, it's starting to smell like oak or cedar, like wood. The first time around, it's had a stink smell to it. Uh, it doesn't have much of a bourbon whiskey taste, but it's very smooth. It is really smooth. Yeah. Damn. It's a little, I, I was almost disappointed in the fact that it wasn't going to have a bourbon whiskey taste, but I mean, the smoothness puts it together. I'm, I'm cool with it not tasting like a bourbon barrel. It's just like a, well. I could drink this for a regular beer. Oh, yeah. Well, it says scotch on there, so it's more like a smooth scotch. Ah, uh, that's true. A smooth scotch, you can sit there and sip all those all day. Get drenched. Good. Carbonation is tiny, which is really weird because, like, it just it feels like it's smaller than regular beer. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's like a thing with the scotch. I'm liking it. So, let's see. Stupid shit for the week. Um, I did not get hands on the intended mystery beer because I took a field trip with my parents for like five, six days to Michigan. They have a business where they sell sheet metal for old tractors. And I literally was so desperate to get the fuck away <laughs> that I took three days off work last week. To, to a hotel room with his parents. To stay in a hotel room with my parents and sit in a hot ass barn and not be at work and not be around my kid. It was surprisingly fucking amazing. Uh, the hotel was both swanky and trashy at the same time. The area we were, the area of uh, Michigan we were in, uh, was weird because they didn't really have as much like big name stuff. Like the hotel was called the Comstock Inn. It wasn't the Comstock Inn by Holiday Inn or by somebody else. No, it was a local owned hotel. Interesting. Um, so a small town. Anyway, oh, now the camera is done sucking the cock for now. That's right. The uh, the hotel was pretty damn cool because it had it was a hotel that was quote swanky enough. It had an actual bar in it, which you don't see in like the Holiday Inns and bullshit like that. Not typically. There's one in the bottom of the one in Inglewood. But you don't see that often. No. Um, the hotel bar was whatever, but like every damn night they had wedding parties there. That made for some fucking fun times. Um, the. My daughter did some stupid shit while she was staying at my girlfriend's house. I won't get into uh, too much detail in the podcast, but fucking kids and two hundred dollar bed bills. Grapes kill dogs, guys. Yeah, don't feed your dogs grapes. Um, but uh, like, I was pissed off after that phone call, and I went to the hotel bar and I got this uh, M forty five. I forget who made it. Uh, local made beer, and it was the hoppiest motherfucking shit in the world. That day, I was at the tractor show with my folks, and I sold this dude like seven hundred dollars worth of crap. I think I said crack. I was like, "Whoa, we're on to the drug dealer." Seven hundred dollars worth of tractor parts and shit, just bullshitting with the guy. He saw me sitting there at the bar. He's like, "Oh, dude, dude, I bought all that stuff from you." I'm like, "He might ask me to buy him a beer." I had like, you know, this much beer left in my glass. And he turns around, he's like, "I'll buy you another one." And they had this milkshake IPA. And the bar wasn't great because literally all the signboard just said was milkshake. It didn't say anything about it. Yeah. And I sat there and drank that. That dude showed me so many fucking pictures of tractors like they were kids. That's funny. Sometimes you forget about that shit when you don't go to conventions for a while. But man, he was drinking rum and cokes like nobody's business. The time it took me to drink like one glass of beer about twice the size, he pounded back three rum and coke. He, he's fucking trashed. Old hellbillies like the tractors. Well, the fun part about that, though, is that every night we were there, that hotel had a wedding party. That'd be cool. And while he was sitting there talking about tractors and shit, I was kind of passively like, uh-huh. There was this kid, like, maybe 25 years old or so there sitting next to me. And next to him was this 30, 35-year-old redhead. Okay. And it was great because he, like... Oh, I broke these fingers. He had like these fingers at a cast, the pointer and the thumb. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He had this like dirt bike he was running around showing pictures of, he was all proud about. And you know, he was pretty, he was pretty pretty. This chick, um, he was like working his game hard, like every damn movie could have come up with. And my honest opinion, just looking at that chick and her body language, all he would have had to say to her is, nice shoes, wanna fuck? 
and within like five, ten minutes of them being there, they, and that, them talking, him working, they started making out. The next thing I heard him say is, fuck this hotel. There's a cheaper one down the street, man. They only charge 50 bucks for a room. That's some funny shit. And they fucking, like, you know, they fucking left and went up the street and went, huh. You know, she didn't care who the hell she was going home with, but she was going to go home and get fucking dick. He thought he had some fucking gold vagina pussy going on or something. Gold vagina pussy. A golden game. Yeah. I don't think he had a vagina pussy. <laughs> he was like, man, I've got some gold game here, man. This is going to be great. It's just like, all right, dude. She looks like she's got at least like a kid or two and maybe hates life. Maybe. Well, 35, probably. The, right. <laughs> the next night, I was down at the bar. Um, they had another wedding party going on. And they didn't run off together, but there was a lesbian couple there making out. That's all right. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> I was like, that's cool. Too bad I had to no, say no, no, no. That, that, that's not the No, no, no. That's not the best part. Because when I got back to the place with my parents, there was this, like, uh, smoking hot little brunette in a uh, blue dress. And this dude who, you know, he was dressed up in a tux, so he had to been part of the wedding party. They were sitting out there on, they had like uh, benches out front of the place where people smoke. And they were sitting out there on this bench just fucking making out hardcore. So Ron just spent his week in being a voyeur. <laughs> I mean, dude, dude, it was great though, he seriously. Did. It was He's hilarious. Like, you don't have to share a room with my parents. Oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. I mean, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> But the fucking guy and the girl, I like went up to the room, dropped off my bag, and went back down to have a couple phone calls. While I was sitting there in the lobby having a phone call, they had like a public restroom, and I saw the guy and the girl go look around all careful like, and then sneak off into the women's room for about 20 minutes together. And then I saw her walking out like, yeah. And she was looking around, she looked over and saw me, and she just had the look of um, thirsty. That is the only way I could describe that look. Like, she got a little bit of dick, and she needed more. I'm going, oh, that's a scary look. The only thing I can say about that is I'm severely disappointed in the fact that I know you didn't knock on the door and be like, housekeeping. <laughs> I didn't see what room they went to. So they, they went to the women's restroom. Oh, the women's restroom? Yes, Not that, the women's For that, restroom. I was on the phone. I couldn't get off the phone. Oh. Yeah. If the other person's talking, you mute your side and... Walk in and be like, what's up, guys? We'll make this a threesome in the bathroom. Come on, come on. <laughs> that would have been funny shit. But that was, um. That would have been great if you would have walked in there and instead they were playing battleships. <laughs> that would have been even better. <laughs> like, I'm gonna watch them fuck. Oh, no! <laughs> you know, if I'd have saw that, I'd have been more interested in whipping my phone out and recording them playing battleships than them fucking. That would have been a lot funnier for me. Yes, I, I do. Realize that that would be your thing. That's so funny. I'm not going to jerk off to them playing <laughs> battleships by any means. But I will watch it and laugh my ass off. Uh, let's see. What the fuck else happened? Um, while I was at that thing, um, I applied for some... I applied for, like, a bunch of jobs. And one of the ones I applied for that is, like, five minutes from my house, I got an interview. So, haha, fuck you, boss guy. Um, the, the name of the place that he didn't want to say the name of will eventually have its name thrown out there and trashed and ran through the mud. Not even really trashed and ran through the mud so much as I'm bored. I'm just bored being there. That makes sense. Uh, what other things to ramble about are there? Um, I don't know. What the fuck did you guys do this week? Anything cool? Uh, I went to the fair. Was it cool? I don't know. <laughs> It, you like, hear your whole life, you, it's like not cool when you're an adult. I was so excited about it because I haven't met in like 10 years or more probably. And I was like, cool, I'm going to go get some fair food. It's going to be awesome, blah, blah, blah. And about as soon as I get in there, I'm like, no, this sucks. Try taking oh, kids. It's like you're excited no, about killing. <laughs> well, I mean, but try taking kids to the point where they're like your kids and it's all your money that's getting spent. And you're hit $50 as soon as you hit the door and you were really excited. You're like, God damn, this is going to be expensive. Like, I can't believe how much an armband costs to write the fucking back down here. 20 is 25. The fucking fair hasn't been exciting to me since, and I hate to say this, since, like, arcade games were a thing. Um, so... Yeah, because there used to be an arcade, didn't there? Yeah. They, they arcade, don't have it there anymore? I don't know. Arcades used to be a thing. So, like, um... My kids, so that was probably... 
My uh, grandparents used to own a construction place there in Eaton called Brazil Construction. Been out of business a long damn time now. And it was, you know, just up the street from the fairgrounds. And, you know, I would, during the fair week especially, I would go to up there in the mornings with mom, and then I'd walk over the fair and go wander around the fair. And that arcade tent, you know, I would take 20 bucks better and just beat the ever living hell out of the arcade games in that tent. And, you know, now it's just like, huh, well, there's cows and chickens and rabbits and shit and political stuff. Well, hey, look, elephant ears, I'm good. I was just happy to get some fair food, really. Yeah. When he was talking about the fair, I was kind of like, I didn't know his grandparents owned a place out in, in Greenville, and I'm like, one in Eaton. And then well, like they had the Preble County Fair, not the dark. That, I remember the first time I ever went to the Preble County Fair, and Larry took me there, and I literally, we walked around, and he's like, yeah, that's it. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, this is a joke. Well, I was like so disappointed that it took me like, I didn't think, I just thought every fucking fair was big, you know? No, 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 the Preble County Fair was always like Redneckville, Preble County, the only thing, only reason they have a fairgrounds worth of shit at all is because of the pork, pork festival. Mm -hmm. They have that thing every That's year. That's bigger than the fucking fair. Yeah, well, they have that thing where they bring all the fatties in to eat as much uh, pig as you can stomach. Yeah, that's why they call it the Great Dirt County Fair. Yeah, yeah. it's just everything else is just, it's the fair. Well, I've heard that like there's been years the Dark County Fair has done better than the state fair. No, I'm just, people come from out of state and camp all week there's like campers set up and they just fucking say i don't like, get it but whatever this is a great dark county fair like well that was fun when i was a kid i guess well but, that you talk about fair food that tractor show i went to that was like the, the one great thing about it i did not make it in any fairs this year and i won't make it to any but that tractor show had fair food all over the place and i was eating like a fucking fat king hell yeah um oh speaking of other fun things at the tractor show they had a flea market that was like the single scariest, most awesome clusterfuck of a flea market I've ever seen. I did find one thing, which old junk Atari that does work, but there were like two booths there that just, just enthralled the ever living shit out of me. One was a guy selling like flags and he had like a goddamn giant Trump flag that was like, 20 feet across. It was fucking huge. Oh, yeah. Um, he also had a uh, Joe Biden is a piece of shit sign with an actual photograph of shit on it. That's great. For your front yard. And every time I walked by his booth, I would literally hear him say, God damn Joe Biden. And I'm like, okay, buddy, that's cool. Settle down. That's good stuff. <laughs> and then the guy in the booth next to him, he was my goddamn hero. Oh, yeah, why's that? Well, the booth sold the following. Shotguns, handguns, ammunition, bootleg DVDs. And every time I walked by the booth, he was smoking weed. Good stuff. Because weed is apparently legal in Michigan. Good stuff. And I'm going, man. Well, he didn't give a fuck, and nobody gives a fuck. And he had, of course, the uh, one of the Joe Biden shit signs in his, uh, we'll call this front yard at the uh, booth, I'm going, man, that is fucking murka right there. That's great. No, you mentioned arcades, though. I've seen this several times, and I'd like to go. I thought about taking the kids, but they don't have any food there. But it's a craft beer place called OK Effect, and it's a craft beer arcade. Who's that? It's in Dayton. Huh. I've never even heard of it. I've seen it several times, and it's always like, wow, I want to go there. Because I just think they've had this like, arcade and a bunch of, you know, it's like a cool time all the way around. They just don't serve food, I think. All right, I'm gonna bust out our second beer, which is not the second beer I bought because it was too damn warm, and I fucked up my hosting this week. But this was what we Party had. Fell. We had this one in the can anyway, so. Been sitting there, I think, from the first week. Probably. It's uh, Dread Wolf by Rusty Rail Brewing, and it is a bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stout. That's amazing. And it is 10.3% by volume. Nice. And we got this cool, like... <laughs> Just think if he had that one and then the other one is supposed to be like 12%. I do. You have that one's 12%? That's the 12%. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the 12%. This was like six something. Our pre beer was 7.2. The yeah, word of the day is like, fucking Ooh. trash. <laughs> Good times. Hey. I just like that. Just think if he had this. Uh, dude. Just wait. <laughs> wait till she finds out. <laughs> wait till she sees how big my dick really is. <laughs> wait till he finds out mine's bigger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the smile of you. Yeah, that's right. 
That and tacos. Yes. Um, there we go there. That looks delicious. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Homeowner gets oh a good bit. <laughs> hey, that's as much as you guys have. There we Bitches. go. Bitches. Let's see, what flavor? Oh, bourbon barrel would be here. Bourbon barrel stout. Ooh, imperial stout. Aged in bourbon barrel. This smells delicious. This smells like my kind of shit. Rusty right here. red. I'm like, I think I'm getting like, they're like mostly my. You favorites. bought that one. Was you that you for me? That was you. No, oh, wow, that's been sitting there that long. That's uh, yeah, we um. That was a bottle shop, Cincy. Mhm. Mm I can't smell it. It's that COVID thing I had. Oh no, she's got COVID again. I can smell some things and some things I can't. It's really weird. It's really nice because it tastes delicious. And what's really nice about it is I still have yet to be able to smell one of my own farts so I can gas people out and not be grossed out oh, if they dude, try to retaliate. Dude, that reminds me. Um, I, I was talking to the uh, the girlfriend person on the way over. And so she's got like this work from home thing because of some medical stuff with her kid. But uh, they got her a what I will refer to as a minion or assistant. Okay. Apparently the guy got COVID like six months ago, nine months ago. And he still can't smell things. And uh, she told me today that uh, her boss asked her, and then she told him no, to tell the guy he needs to bathe. Oh, that's good stuff. Because apparently the guy can't smell himself, and he can't tell he stinks. I'm like, so was he like a big fat guy or what? No, a little skinny, like 22-year-old, 23-year-old college kid. That just stinks. And he can't smell himself, and he stinks, and he's like, oh, I don't smell, so I'm going to have to shower. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, shower every day. I had, it was really great. So, one of the last jobs I had, I was actually really quiet at, like, especially when they switched stuff around and I got pushed to first shift. Like, everybody got put, put, pushed to first shift. I was on third, none of management knew me. So, my thing was, I just kind of like kept quiet and stayed in the truck. And I'm like, we were really slow because they took all of third shift and put them, like, so we were basically had too many employees on first shift at that point to where they didn't have enough work for everybody. So I'd sit around for a really long time, and I'm like, they're gonna notice I'm sitting around, I'm gonna look like a piece of shit. So I would just go and do chores, like I would just grab a broom and just, you know, make myself look busy, because at least if I did that, and nobody else was, because everybody else was fucking pissed because their shifts got all rearranged. Like, everybody was pissed, so they were kind of like, in, uh, like, rebelling against the whole, I got my shift changed, so nobody wanted to do any work, so I was the only one that would grab a broom. And I was like, well, fuck it, man. You know, like, this is actually kind of fun because I'd put my headphones in. And sometimes I wouldn't even have my radio turned on, but I would just be listening to everybody else's conversations. My daughter does that shit. <laughs> it's just so fucking fun. And then I would just be like, I was doing a whole bunch of chores, and I would get, like, all the chores done. So they thought I was, like, a real, like, well, like, suck up and, what you know, super nice and this, everything that I'm not, like, other than a good worker. And so then I ended up getting promoted, and the first day that I had my manager job, we had a complaint that one of the crews smelled absolutely awful. And so like two employees went into the place, and I'm like, I knew which one it was. So I texted the one, I was like, hey, apparently your partner smells absolutely fucking horrible, so I'm gonna go out and warn the both of you guys, just so, you know, so I'm not like being a bitch to him. I'm targeting the whole truck, but really it's just him. And she's like, okay, cool. And then my boss was like, oh, hey, I'll go do it if you uh, want me to. Uh, you know, it's your first day. I was like, fuck that. I'm going to do it. This is fun. <laughs> I like saying that shit. Excuse me, sir. You <laughs> smell like asshole. <laughs> Sweaty, fetid asshole I was just on like, a 93 degree late August summer afternoon. It was more so just like, hey, man, we got a complaint at the hospital that said the crew stinks. So, um, yeah, bud, you're going to have to start wearing deodorant and taking better baths, all right? Okay. <laughs> Dude, I was listening to the radio the other day. What's that gotta do to your ego, by the way? My ego? What? Man, you oh, stay take strong. better showers. I was listening to the radio the other day, and they were talking about, like, the percentage of people, like, how often they change their underwear one day. Oh, and then oh like, that's a scary one. There was, like, 3% of people, I think it was 3% of people, that only change their underwear once a week. And I'm like, that's gotta be all dudes. Oh, I don't even. That, that's probably like, not. That's gonna be some like scary ass dick cheese shit going on right there. Right. That's that's what I was gonna say. There's probably women who think that they don't they don't fucking stink. That they're not nasty. That what if some of those women are the women that the like, seller? I was thinking that. Yes. 
Yes. I'm like, what? They sell their underwear. There's dudes that they want yeah. you to, and they want you to wear it multiple days before you sell oh, it. Oh, it's like a fucking Japanese vending machine. Kind of, but they just want you to wear it like multiple days. Yeah. And then I think there was like kind of the same percentage of people that only shower once a week or something. That would be uh, April the X there. That's so gross. Um, like. I go for like one day without showering, and I feel so gross. I can't stand it. Dude, I'm like OCD. I'll shower twice sometimes. I do too. Sometimes. This time of year, definitely. There was a, I, I'm sure they still have it, but it's just not a very popular um, um, dating site. And I remember seeing ads for it. I can't remember what it was called. Plenty of fish. No, it's it's. I don't know what Stinky it was. Stinkysingles.com. I don't know, maybe. But my friend, she was like saying that there's like all these questions that you answer and like everybody gets these questions and that's like part of the profile you don't have to do it but the more you answer the better you get um like paired with people that are like you and one of the questions like was like how often do you think it's acceptable to like shower and that's like some of the stuff every four days once a week i'm like who the fuck would answer that even if they, like, let's just say that they were lazy and had poor hygiene but they knew they should be showering more, they would easily be like, oh, psh, every day. When they really don't, like, I, I think you have to shower every day, but I'm so fucking lazy, I do it like twice a week, you know? It's like, it's so fucking gross. It's gross, I don't get it. Like this time of year, especially, like, just this hot and going outside and melting sweat mm -hmm. yourself to death. I mean, at the very least, I showered right before I came. I won't probably, I'll get in the shower. I probably won't use soap. But I will rinse off because if you like wash too much, it just it it's weird for your bacteria, and then you get like super dirty, like you just have to keep showering more or something like that. You just kind of. Um, I remember back in the day at Hastings. When you wash your own um, prote protective uh, two body. Fucking, there were two fucking people Little back in the day at Hastings that this conversation reminds me of. One, it immediately reminded me of Rick. Yeah, well, Rick was going to be the second. We'll talk about that first. There was this dude that started there when I worked there. Big fat motherfucker. He was. What, 350, 400 he just, he, All around unpleasant attitude. Yeah, and he, uh, he was a fucking dick, man. And, like, I think he was too fat to reach around and wipe his ass or something sometimes. Um, like, the customers would complain. Like, they had these little... I, I hate them. They had these, like, two pods. They had pods for two registers each, right? And, like, two normal-sized people. No problem sitting in there with, like, you know, a foot or two between the two of you. Rick, man, there was just, like... And he was just bad. Like when I was a manager there, I fucking hated going to the office after him. Everybody hated going off in the office after him. There's this dude named Charles that worked there that like started to the like he got like a can of fucking aerosol and would just spray the shit out of the office as soon as he saw the Rick start a shift. Because at the end of your shift, you'd go in the office and count down your door. He'd spray the shit out of the office. He'd fucking prop the door open and like duct tape the little thing that would make the alarm trigger go off. The door was open too long and I'd put a fan just to get that stench out of there because it was the kind of stench it that you could taste and it would yeah. stick. I hated going through his line. Like, I mean, he was fairly nice to me, but he'd also try to start shit. And you literally would be like, you know, you stand as far away as possible. You get it within just, a three foot it stink zone. It made your nose tingle. You, like, get within a three, was, you get within a three foot stink zone. How do people let themselves get like that? I don't know. I, th I think you can't smell yourself sometimes. Like, I just, I don't, I've, I don't think I've ever smelled bad. Like, I don't, I've never smelled myself smell bad. Like, but I don't let myself get to that point. So I think maybe they just think like, well, I don't smell bad. Like, if I get working outside or something, you know, on a really hot day, like, I can smell bad by the end of the day, you know. Like in Rick's case, it. it so yeah, you used. Well, you used. I continuously do body spray and lotion. You used like fucking use deodorant and shit on your pits. Right. I, I think he needed to use it under his tits and his flat Probably. fat folds too. That that would have been like the only thing to help. I don't know if he was actually too fat to reach back and wipe his ass. I don't know. I didn't do his under do his laundry or see his underwear. I don't want to know. I assume people like that are probably like depressed or something like that. Probably. Maybe. And then there was this other kid that worked there. Um, I called him Puppy. Uh, he was a customer. I don't remember what the hell his real name was, but he worked in some restaurant around Richmond. And uh, at the time, I could tell you what it was, and I'd avoid it. Hey, he's like fucking big, nasty, like fucking like things on his knuckles. And he just stank to high hell, and he would follow me around the store all day and day. And it was like customer service. I could be like, listen up, you stinky ass motherfucker. Get out of my place. 
If he's there every day, you are. You can do that. Hey, motherfucker. He we're was, no longer customer service. We're friends. You fucking stink. He, he was but, one of those that decided that Axe body spray is an acceptable replacement for bathing. No. So he smelled of Axe and Axe. Axe. Yeah. So Axe. Asks. Asks. Yeah. Asks. That's you ever encounter anybody like that, Ariana? It is horrible. This, yes. That, that, yes? <laughs> What's your story? I'm not going to tell this story. <laughs> it's like, they might find out. No, I, um... It's a smell again. It's a smell you can taste. I can smell that Rick dude after him mentioning him. And that's just the thing, like, I don't know how... I don't know, like I just, I feel like people don't realize certain things. And I had this, I was telling somebody about it, I can't remember, like one of my passengers about it, and I don't know why, I can't, but um, I had this other passenger that used to be a paramedic, but she just, so it was like too stressful, and she got burned out on it, so she was doing this other thing where she was, um, Damn, I got a buzz, that's something impressive. Yeah, she was, um, what was she doing? Oh, she volunteered for this place that um, they basically helped women get off the streets. Like they might have been like just living on the streets, or they might have actually been like, like just went into like sex work and and prostitution and shit. And they literally would have to tell them how. Well, you gotta bathe every day. You can't dress like that if you want to get rid. Of, if you want to like stop having this kind of attention. Oh, when you're on your period, this is how you have to deal with it. You just can't fucking not do anything about it. You actually have to use pads and tamp like they have to teach. Like I've heard of that. That's I've heard of that. like I, basic basic hygiene shit. I know. I've told people lately. I don't know if I mentioned it last week or like a, recently here, but it's it literally like I guess that's a very common thing. Like people are very ignorant, and that actually goes to my lift. Catastrophes. They're not, they're not necessarily a catastrophe anymore. I usually just tell them, like, hey, you can't get in. So many people try to bring fucking infants without a car seat. And I had this one lady get, she's like getting in today. Like, it, she, I saw one kid, the baby, and herself. And I was like, she was coming out of her door. I was like, hey, do you have a car seat? She's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. So I wasn't really paying attention. Three little kids get in my car. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Where did those other two come from? Like, God damn it. And like maybe one of the other ones was questionable for a car seat. I was like, whatever. The three were in the back, and I was like, okay, so the three's gonna be in the back, the car seat's gonna be there, she's probably gonna sit up front. No. All three of the little kids, the baby in a car seat, and herself. I was like, I can't have all five of you in the back. I'm a driver. So three people in the back. I was like, why do you have to come sit up front? And she's like, I gotta get these kids to school. I'm like, I kind of feel bad. I was like, I don't know her story. She could be a single mom with four kids trying to get them to school. For one, you fucking missed the bus. Not my problem. Her problem. Her fault. You know, but it's cool. I'm being cool about it. But so I still have all four of them in the back, and she's sitting up front. I, I, I almost feel like she did not buckle the baby in, or maybe I told her. To, I, yeah, I had to tell her to buckle that baby in. The baby was buckled in the car seat. The car seat was not buckled in my car, and she's like giving me shit. She's like, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding I'll me? I'll say it's your ass if anything happens. Right, and it's. I kind of I started looking into some of that. I guess if you're a, like a taxi, you actually don't have to have a car seat. But I, I mean, I don't know if Lyft and Uber fall under that. But even if they did, and somebody was holding their fucking infant, because we don't have that car seat, Come on, this and their like kid the... gets injured, I would feel fucking bad. Right? That's fucked up. This is like the fucking eighties or something. All the shit. time. It is. It's like literally. It's it's in these people. I I when you're in Lyft. You're always in the ghetto, and I literally feel like that. It's just, it's I, one of the people that I had a conversation with a couple days ago. We were having similar conversations. He's like, it's learned helplessness. I was like, fucking it, it is learned helplessness. And then I had this other lady today. She really pissed me off. She was very polite the whole time, but what she did it really pissed me off. This and this is like laziness to me. She had a really small infant that obviously wouldn't even be able to sit up with like a regular seatbelt on. But it was her and her other kid. So there's only three of them. And she's standing out, and I was like, um, do you have a car seat for that baby? And she's like, no. I was like, I can't take you. She's like, well, hold on. She hands the baby to this kid. He's like struggling to hold the baby. I'm like, she goes in, opens the door, of course he's right there. Like right in the fucking door. I was so fucking pissed. I was like, that's just pure laziness. Because she's going to, to take the kid to school, and they can't send a kid by themselves, so she's going to be riding back. 
And it's like, I get it, you're just making a 10 minute trip up the road, because it's, it's like almost three miles, most of these trips I'm doing, but it's three miles back, that's 20 minutes. It's like, okay, it's only three miles and you're only in town and it's super fucking slow, but stupid shit can happen. Like somebody could just be there's speeding more, through the intersection because they're trying to avoid we'll say, the cops. I'm pretty sure there's more the accidents when people right. are moving slow because no one's paying attention. Right, and it's just like, or through town with all the construction that was going on, I'm just like, are you gonna be fucking shitting me? It's like, no. No, you don't. Yes, you do. You're just too fucking like. How could you be that fucking lazy? And then I start to judge, and like, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, well, you do weigh almost 300 pounds, you fat bitch. Of course you're fucking like. You know, it's like, I don't know. It's it's irritating. It's kind of funny though. It's Poor time. decisions made oh, throughout yeah. the entire life. Mm-hmm. It's I, I, it's hard not to be judgy, but fuck, you know. Sometimes you do, but then again, I say all lazy people who are fat are fat for a reason. But you can be fat without being lazy, because I'm pretty fat. Yeah, mm. a little fat. Maybe. Not that big, but, you know, that's cool. <laughs> I'm working on a great big baby shit. you're not here. lazy either. I'm working on a great big baby shit here, thank you. A baby shit? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a good shit later. Uh, that, 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 that lovely uh, bitch on the end, fantastic tacos. I love eating your taco. I'm also lazy, though. There we go. But you're not fat. Yeah. Sometimes I'm lazy. So yeah. there. It's like, you can be lazy and not fat, but if... You're fat and lazy, it's like, the, the, of course, they go together. That's like stereotyping. It is. It and we're very good at stereotyping Absolutely. on the show. Absolutely. That's what we do here. That's, that's, I, that's, I totally judge. It's, I mean, like, at that, at that point, it's like, I want to, who do I look out for? Who do I profile? Are you going to be fat and lazy? Are you going to be worthless in my car? Are you going to be stupid? Are you going to ask for 20 fucking stops when you could just be putting them in yourself? Like... Yes. It's everything with Lyft. I would rather do Stop Uber. Paying, yeah. Lyft, it, it, well, I was, um, they were offering really good bonuses that was making me average like $27 an hour versus the $20 an hour average on Uber. So it's kind of like you do those, but you're dealing with some horse shit. Mm. And then you're just like, well, I'm done with this now because there's no more bonuses. And then you go back to Uber and it's like fucking pleasant. It's absolutely pleasant. If I would have known that all along, I probably just would have never done Lyft. Is this like a Coke Pepsi difference, or like a Coke RC Cola difference? Oh, God, it's probably like a Coke toilet water difference. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, it's this Lyft is so ghetto. Cause like, well, me and Kelly, we'd ask each other every what day. What is Lyft? Is it like a pink mustache or something? It used to be. That was like their thing. They would give you a big pink mustache you put on the front of your car that would signify you're doing Lyft. You I think it was more rides. so, yeah, I think it was more like the party mobile because I think a lot of them were doing it. Essentially, they started for, um, um, people who are more. Yeah, and that's, and Uber is more like they seem just more classy all the way around. Lyft, I feel like they like catering to the ghetto. Cause it's, I mean, like people say that they're cheaper and that's, I think that's also why you're just like in the ghetto. Like it's, they have no minimum year on the cars. You can drive like a complete piece of shit and they accept your car. Uber won't. Cause I've talked to people like, I, I don't get offers for Uber driving people, but I get Uber Eats. And then we'll go to look and I'm like, your car's too old. You have a good car, it's just too old, you know? And so you can't do- Well, they want some Uber, what, Ubers, you know, they want something dependable, you know what I'm saying? But. Lyft doesn't give a shit. Lyft doesn't give a shit because Lyft just wants the money. Uber, they're probably trying Cut to maintain a little more customer service, and they, they do an better. Image. They they do better at maintaining that image. Hey, bitch, bitch, wash out your glass. Oh God. But they do. I'm gonna take that last sip. But anyway, no, they um. Cause well, so my friend Kelly that does. That too, we'll check in with each other. You driving today? You know, what are you doing? Are there any bonuses doing that? And we do, when I told her, she was like, where are you today? She didn't ask me what I was doing, but she asked me where I was and she knew which app I was doing according to where I was. So you can go anywhere with Uber just the same, but you're always in way better areas doing Uber. All right, I'm going to interrupt. It's time for the mystery beer, mysterious. which is mysterious furious, which I'm gonna put my hand over because the bottle's too damn tall. <sighs> Start for oh, the whistle, baby. Looks like orange juice. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Well, it kind of it has juice. First. Yeah, it did. And now it kind of looks like tea. It's like an amber color. Give me your voice. Twelve percent. Yup. 
Oh, Told you. I'm a, I'm a little buzzed already. Like, I was, I was you know, a little buzzed, but then well, I Well, that Sierra Nevada was like, buzzed. yeah, the, the pre-beer was like 6%, you no, know, 5%. 5. What was it? It was 5, or 7.2. 7, They're all, seven, all like, everything we've been drinking today. Beer. It's not like an IPA. Yeah, everything we've been drinking today is pretty uh, high gravity. Nice. And if you had been paying attention to the conversations we had, you would know that it is, in fact, an IPA. Double IPA. Yep. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I'm getting my shit. I'm getting my shit together. I'm starting to know a little bit. I can't smell it again. It smells slightly fruity. Ah, maybe. It's not bad for an IPA. It's not that hoppy. It's hoppy than I thought. Ooh. Uh, it's pretty. It, the first bit of the sip, it's got like a vanilla taste. It is uh, double dog, double IPA. I like the bottle. And 12% ABV. <laughs> This is 12%. He's like, fuck it, we're just gonna speed right on through this. I don't get it. There is no flavor. It's double IPA. That's your old story. Yep. And it's kind of like a, a little fruity. Like we Made by Flying Dog. I don't know where they're out of. We'll find that one. Flowery later. or vanilla y. Here. You can do the porn shot with the bottle. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. Government warning for that other night. Government that, warning, don't get pregnant and drink beer. For that other night. That other goddamn night, Ralph Stedman. What? That's what it says. Well? For that other night. That other goddamn night. I don't know who Ralph Stedman is. I don't know, but he has. chicken? It's, it's a dog or something. A weird thing in a diaper. It's a monster. Do you need to go eat the box out of the bridge so we can see what it actually is from? I guess. I don't know what this is. So I had this weird dream the other oh, day. Yes. I was uh was this actually like a paper or something? No. It's an IPA. It's full percent. She fucked up. Shut up, bro. <laughs> um yeah, like I had an appointment and I came home and I sat here and I like fell asleep for like an hour and I just started like dreaming hard, man. And I was like, I had this fucking weird ass dream where I can't remember if it was like my mom or my grandpa was in the hospital and then like I can't even remember like all the details or anything but it was just like all these people disappeared except for me and Missy and Missy was a dude, <laughs> and, a dude man. <laughs> and we were walking down the street together and we were like discussing where all these people went and like I was like in mid conversation with her and she just disappears. Oh god, and so I was scary. like freaking the fuck out. This looks like, like a Star Trek episode. I was like, Missy, Missy, I'm like freaking the fuck out and then I like jolted awake and I was like it took me a couple minutes to like get back you know, like back to reality or whatever because I was just like so freaked out. It was so fucking weird. And yeah, I had like actually I had anxiety about it <laughs> the rest of the day. It was so fucking crazy. It felt so real. Okay, now I'm gonna go disappear, and then Nessie, you go disappear. That'd be really fun. We just kind of slowly creep out the doors into our cars and leave. We just keep the recording for the podcast going and everything. And she's like, "Where did you go? <laughs> we were just like walking beside me, and like we were talking about like where did everybody go? Like what do you think's going on here? And and like I was like, I, like turn my head this way, and I turned back, and you were just fucking gone. That was like crazy. Uh, I used to have this dream, and. I, was it the reoccurring dream? Yes, it was a reoccurring. I was like super little. I had this reoccurring dream. So when I was little, I had this little like those big wheels, you know, and it was a, it was a cabbage patch one that had this little thing that you put in the front, and I had like a little teeny tiny like like crap like cabbage patch kid like figurine that went in the front of it. So in my dream, I was riding that down like the alley behind my parents' house, and there was all these flowers, but they had life cereal pieces on it. So I was picking life cereal and put it in the box, the basket on my my big wheels, and I was going, and then I so I was like beside, like like in the alley behind the neighbor's house at this point, and there's two dudes on the porch getting drunk, just talking, and all of a sudden the sky turned completely black, like no stars, no planets, moon, sun, no nothing. The sky was just completely black. And it was mostly just the houses and like the streets that I could see. And those guys were like, oh shit. And they ran into the house and like slammed and shut the door and everything. And then I was like really scared because everything disappeared. Like I, I, I could just keep seeing less and less. 
and then I was trying to get back to my parents' house, but it seemed like so fucking far. And when I went, there, like pounding on the door, like no, nobody was to be, like everybody was gone, like just even out of all the houses. And it was like the weirdest thing. It was a recurring dream I had. I was super young, and it always scared the shit out of me. Molly weird. response says, "This is a dream that reoccurs regularly, but it's a, di it's the same theme every time." Uh, because I did stay in that hotel with my parents for like six days or so, I couldn't um, take care of things that needed to be taken care of. Don't oh, call. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ron had blue balls. <laughs> you know, I did. I was and... being a lawyer at the uh, hotel because everybody was <laughs> fucking making out and getting laid. Well, probably down. a little bit, but like in the dream, I just remember there was this chick that was like all up on my shit, and I'm like, stop, do it, I can't fucking do that. <laughs> it was like a wet dream where I was like denying it because like, you know, it's like, dude, I can't fucking do this here. And it was like, you know, in the dream, it was nowhere important. It's like, let's go, like, I can't fucking do this here. My parents are around. And you were totally talking to your sleep and your I parents heard it. I was hoping for that. I was gonna say that. <laughs> and like, I just remember waking up going, damn it, <laughs> well, shit. And my predominant thoughts were, well, Okay, no, I can't go do anything about this. Just stop it, brain. <laughs> Fucking stop it. It'd be really funny if you woke your parents up. Hey, guys, don't use the restroom for a while, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I got shit. I got some things I'm going to take care of. Just stand there and keep fucking having. I got to take a shower. I have to sweat. <laughs> you know, something about seeing my parents uh, in right. the bed snoring next to me just really is a good, uh, well, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's like a chat. Bone kill? Yeah, bone kill. <laughs> Chassis mode or something. She's like, ah, damn it. Ah. That was, yeah, yeah. So when she mentioned you talking in your sleep, that reminded me. So when we went to Florida, and we all shared the same room, every fucking night, I mean, I knew Jacob talking to sleep, but every fucking night we were there, he was talking to sleep. And we're like, dude, is he talking to sleep every night? And Logan's like, yep, yep, he does, every night. <laughs> so I hear him every night talking to sleep. And the thing of it is, like, I forget exactly what he was said, but it was not like he was doing football drills. He was like, ha, 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 three, four, five, and just, I mean, just, huh? <laughs> it's like, Man, yeah, I mean, it's so like he's yelling and shit in his sleep, or be like, Josh, did you do that? <laughs> Man, if there was somebody doing that, my brother used to do that, and you could have whole fucking conversations with him. If somebody started doing that with me now, I would totally try to have conversations with them. I have, I have had an ex that used to, like, had to have a conversation with him. That's great. Yeah. I, I couldn't have conversations with Jake, like, because you'd be trying to talk to him and he's saying the wrong shit. Like, it's really confused and he's not understanding and it's, they're, like, not going together. Because he's, I mean, I've, I've heard him do that before where he'd fall asleep on the couch or something and be watching movies and I'd say shit to him when he was little. I didn't realize he still did that. And it's really weird. Because I kind of wonder if, I mean, like, because if he does was, that, it's, like, related to seizures and shit. Like, like that same brain thing. <laughs> Even though he's, he's on seizure meds and the seizures are controlled, the fact that he talks in his sleep every fucking night and yells in his sleep apparently is not controlled. Maybe it had, well, I guess he was doing it before he was on medication. I was like, maybe it's a side effect of medication or something. Right, making it worse. I mean, it could, Jesus. Because he complains... Complains a lot about being tired, but I don't, I mean, we even lowered his doses on his medication so he wouldn't be so tired. So I really don't know if that, like, I mean, it could put him, like, in a deeper dream state, you know, like, that makes him, then he's, like, more vocal because he already talks in his sleep. If it wasn't your kid, I would definitely say you should just totally fuck with him during the sleep and say all sorts of fucked up stuff. I probably should anyway, just because it'd be funny. Like, Not too fucked up shit. Let him watch Freddy, like, one of the uh, Freddy Krueger movies. I think that would affect him. And then be like, one, two, Freddy's coming for you. Just, one, two, Freddy's coming I had weird Freddy dreams when I was young. I know, that's why I said it. So you'd start talking about that shit. And it's really weird because the dreams that I would have like that are always in video game form. Like, sometimes you will see, like, I'll see the arrows, and I'll be following, like, doing what the arrows tell me to do. It's like, oh, it's clicking on this. I'm supposed to grab this. And, like, it's really weird. And then I'll die, and then I'll start back over, and it'll happen like two or three times. And that's when I play a lot of video games. Oh, <laughs> I think I've had video game dreams before, because I, used to, I haven't really been playing video games lately, but I used to play them a lot when I was younger. Right. It'd be really cool if I had a, a Grand Theft Auto dream. I think I've had a dream. <laughs> I used to play that a lot. I used to play the shit out of that game. Oh, yeah. Dude. 
I've not felt this on a pop plug in a bit, but with all the high proof stuff, I feel pretty nice good. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, I got a poop. <laughs> no, I've done that before. It's like, I'll be back. Maybe after you guys are done. But it's cool. All this butt plug stuff, I got a poop. <laughs> That's good stuff. Damn. So I was told, <laughs> I, I asked, Someone, I was like, so did I snore? And they were like, yeah, and you also fart in your sleep. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> like the first time. That's so great. Well, I, I heard that if you hold your farts, so if like you're holding your farts during the day because you don't want to yeah, fart in a butt, they just happened to develop. <laughs> it's like, like my stomach kind of hurt, but I didn't have to fart. <laughs> just farting in your sleep. Well, there was one time Larry farted in his sleep. And it was like, it was a really big fart. He just was going, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know if it was like that or not. Did he shit himself? Uh, he didn't shit himself, but he farted. He was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that, that far, but he did, you know. I really like the idea of that conversation. You're sitting there, you're all snuggled up to somebody, spoon position, booty right up up there on the thing. And, you know, all this, do I fart in my sleep? Yep, and you snore. <laughs> no, do I snore my sleep? Yep, and you fart. Keep the bowl that, warm. That, yeah, I got kind of embarrassed. I turned around. I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna point my fucking weapon at you." <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That was another time. It wasn't my dream. It was Larry's dream. It was, it was like right when I first started dating. Like he was kind of like laughing. I was awake for a while, and he was like laughing. I was like, "What are you laughing about?" He's like, "The lady at the drive-thru." I was like. Why? He's like, because she's going to see my boner. <laughs> <laughs> boner! And I was like, well, I don't, I can't remember if I just let him sleep right when I woke up. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what? What? Well, my boner. What he was dreaming about? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, when I, I think I'm, I, whenever he woke up and I told him, he's like, he's like, I had a dream where we were at McDonald's drive through and I was wearing, I was only in my underwear, and I had a boner. <laughs> that Ronald, man. Oh, that shit. Ronald McDonald. Oof. Wild <laughs> sex. Uh, oh! Clown if you sex. ever get it. Well, it's not clown sex, but it's <laughs> damn near close enough. Do, so, do, 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 do. If you ever get bored, and a lot of these movies are only like 70 minutes long, and you have Amazon Prime, I suggest you go through these shitty movies, because I was like going through the movies, I was like, let me see if I can find a dumb movie for my kids to watch with me. And there was one called Llamageddon, and we started watching it, and Logan's like, yeah, this looks stupid. So I was like really disappointed that I didn't get it. I mean, like, we were like six minutes in, and he's like, nope, don't want to watch it. I was like, I'm kind of like really getting into this. But then like most of the way through it, it started sucking. But after he went to, because I had to watch it later after he and I watched Beavis and some Butthead do America. But the next day, because there was these other movies I saw, so there's one called The Killer Couch, which is actually a recliner. And you see this recliner like sneaking around, like looking through doorways and getting really pissed off and shit at the people. And it's like, it's so fucking stupid, right? But it's like, you gotta watch it. You just, like that one I could keep watching. I was laughing my ass off. They have, I don't, because see, like, I was, like, Googling some of these, and then, like, some other movies were coming up, like, people also watched, and that was on Google versus Amazon Prime, but I think a lot of them were also on Amazon Prime, but there's, like, The Killer Donuts, The Killer Pinata, there's a second one to the, um, Lamageddon, it's Lamageddon 2, the, oh, fuck, god damn it. That would be a great title. I, <sighs> Lamageddon 2, the fuck, god damn it. <laughs> it's... Llama again to the alpaca lips. <laughs> I love it. I was like, yes! I was like, that's a great fucking name. Logan's like, llamas are not the same thing as al alpacas. I was like, they don't need to be. It's they just funny. It's bitch. fucking funny. And he was like, all trying to be like, you know, you should make them watch. You should make them watch rubber. I was just getting ready to talk about that movie because that movie was fucking terrible. What? <laughs> That movie was fucking awful. I, I, I remember it. hearing about it, and I, for some, I, I think finished I it, watched it because I was committed to it. Oh, I you paid, watched that. I paid money for it, so I was fucking committed. I didn't pay money for it. I found it for free, and it was fucking terrible. And I was like, so I think rubber I is about a, a movie about a tire that gets sentience and self awareness and goes around killing people. I think at some point, it's in the movie spying on some chick in the shower, and I think it's like tire jerking off or something. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's so funny. 
Oh my god, it was so awful. But like, yeah, yeah. It, it, at one point, like they had this audience that was watching the movie in the dip, sitting in the middle of the desert. They were watching it, and uh, like they all got poisoned by a cultist or something. Yeah. I don't know. Like all the movies that she was just talking about did remind me of that. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all have something stupid to like what actually happened. Like usually, if it's a good movie, there's a plausible movie-wise explanation as to like what happened and it's like intriguing interesting and there's like more to the story all these shitty movies it's just like yep this is how it happened like there's this the velocipastor is awesome I've heard oh you i've seen that, that one before. that one was uh you know if they had a special effects budget at all it might have been good but it's and then like I read the description for it and basically this pastor his parents died and he went to China and for some reason when he went to China he had the ability to at will change into a fucking dinosaur whenever he wanted like it, the the velociraptor like dude the velociraptor that they used was like the cheapest like foam rubber bullshit ever like at one point you know like those horse heads you can like ride around oh, on as God, a kid yes. it was like that but like a velociraptor head. Um, he, he got like scratched by an ancient raptor claw from a clan of ninjas or some fucked up horse shit. It's just so goofy and it's so stupid you have to watch At, at one it. point in the movie like, I don't know, most of the way through, more than three-fourths, it like just busted into this like weird 70s-esque dance number with this chick who was a whore but wasn't fucking because he was a priest or something. That's great. She was about to show her tits and he was like, no, don't do that or something weird. That's so funny. I think there were other ones. There was a Jesus Christ vampire hunter, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a, I know you mentioned that one before, too. That one I've seen. There's a Abe Lincoln vampire hunter that I saw once. That I've actually heard had that, a, one. that one actually had a some kind of a budget and it impressed me because they had a budget. That's so funny. It wasn't just made by like a local dude who was like, I'm gonna make a fucked up movie because I can't. Well, what's funny is when I was like going through the names of those movies, Larry's like, is it, isn't it like Ron's friend making those name making those movies? What's his name? Hiroshi or something? I forget what he called him. And I was like, um, Henrik Kuto? He's like, oh uh, yeah, that guy. I was like, he actually makes legitimate movies. Like he makes he doesn't make stupid movies. He actually I've never seen any of his movies, but they're not like intentionally shitty quality movies. Like a lot of these are. He's made a few. Some of his first ones are pretty rough. Like he had my daughter in one called a bulldog for Christmas. But that, that was if you like, go back and rewatch it, that's a pretty rough watch, but he was intending to be serious. Yes, it wasn't intentionally stupid, like a fucking attacking recliner. <laughs> Thinks this shit up. It's just so funny. It's just stupid. like you're sitting in like some kind of film class or something one day and you're like, like eh, running out of time on a yeah. uh, on an assignment you have to finish. Seeing what kind of stupid it's like you like, get a really dumb assigned assignment, but you have to make something good out of it. Yeah. Or you just sit around with your fucking oh stone like and shit like that. It would be funny. I, I had that movie I had a whole movie that I I made up and it was a prostitute movie and it was like I it was one night when I was still working at the factory. I mean, I wrote all this down and like the one of my uh, coworkers uh, she was reading and as I was coming along with it, she goes, I would watch that. I was, it was like there was like good storyline to it and like the the dudes were trashy and just drunk and it was really funny and it was like like it was really the way I had it because it was going to be intentionally shitty but it actually had a good storyline to it and I'm like prostitutes need to be played by dudes and then the two main character dudes need to be played by females just to make like fuck it up make it like weird and I, like when I was thinking of it, it was like me and you were like the main character dudes. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. I even was like pricing cameras and stuff, but I just like didn't know how to do it and shit. And I think like, at the one point, like, you know, the, the whole thing was in my house and my house burned down, but I, I, I know it. I, I, I could come up with it and get the whole dialogue and everything back again. Dude, I sit at work and I just like think of these dumb ass like story ideas. And I'm like, dude, this could be like a Black Mirror episode. Yes. Like I think of stupid shit like that, and I'm like, man, that would be so cool, you know? And like, would be cool. And like, I'll write like a little bit down, and then I'll find it later, and I'm like, fuck is that? That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, so funny. I I think it'd be fun to do like um like Saturday Night Live, like a skit show, or even like full length stuff. Like it would be really funny to just do. I've worked in a 
suck the fucking soul out of me. Yes. I probably do shit like that pretty well. You just you just gotta have the will. You're gonna be like, I can do this, and I'm gonna beat work, and I'm gonna fucking do it, and I'm just gonna start selling this, and it's you! This is gonna be great! <laughs> I need an instigator is what I need. <laughs> we can do this! We're gonna buy cameras! Yeah! Yes, we're gonna do this! <laughs> You know, it's a lot easier now than it was back in the day because we have these cameras everywhere, too. Yes. I, That'd seen, be good for a sketch show. That would be really like, shitty to try to record a whole movie. Like, I've know. seen... But it'd be kind of funny if you could do it. I've seen some... The challenge camera, for it. Right. I've seen the camera equipment Henrik has. It's similar to your GoPro, but, like, bigger. Right. And, like, two or $3,000. It's when you start... So, the camera itself isn't the expensive part. It's when you start adding in the lenses. Mm -hmm. That's when shit starts getting crazy. Lenses and extra batteries. Yeah. Um, so, Double Dog IPA was... I decided to look up where the fuck it was. Because I was like, where the fuck are they out of? Colorado. Yeah. We would get, like, a lot of shit from out west here lately. Yes, it does. Because, like, my thing is... I mean, there's a lot of breweries opening up everywhere. But I still feel like Dayton and Cincinnati are, like, the home of... Fucking alcoholics and drunks. Specifically, Woody Creek, Colorado. The little story on the website is something about people were they were climbing a mountain in Pakistan, and they got they decided they needed to go like make their own beer after they couldn't get any alcohol in Pakistan or something. I don't know. There's a whole big story on the website. Just look up Double Dog IPA. You'll find the shit. So they're gonna do a twelve percent. So that way they don't have to try to have as much alcohol in one sitting. Yay for Pakistan and Muslim countries without alcohol. Sorry guys, it sucks to be you. Um, talking about Dayton and Cincinnati being full of uh, fucking alcoholics. They're like um, big um, areas that have a lot of breweries compared to everywhere else. Yeah. And so there was something I read about that. It's like basically they're like the shittiest places to live. Like they suck. Yeah. And uh, I, I may have said this before. I was going to say like a lot of times whenever I'm at work and we're in Cincinnati, we're down by the hospital. And they're like, oh, I think it was at your party. They're like, oh, why don't you stage here? Instead, like, they basically want us to stage in Kenwood instead of, like, downtown Cincinnati. They're like, it's it's dangerous in downtown Cincinnati. I'm like, this ain't shit compared to some places in Dayton. Like, and I, and I always thought, like, I just kind of thought that because Cincinnati is bigger, it would just be more rough, more crime. It's, I don't really feel like it's that bad. It's like, it's way more ghetto in a lot of places in um, Dayton. It's like, oh. So, um, along with the same topic, so, I've talked about before, I watch a lot of shit on YouTube because I've got that much time at work. One of the channels I follow is this uh, like reenactor dude, Townsend in some, some such shit, whatever. But uh, I, I've come up with a few beer recipes of my own because of some of the shit he's done. Um, I was sitting there scrolling today and he had an episode. It was like, you know, it just showed these two dudes with beards and I was sitting there talking about like, a uh, modern brewery but done in old school standard. I'm like, oh, I'll fucking watch that. Absolutely, that's in my uh, list of beer related things to watch. And I'll be fucking damned if he wasn't in the last week. The dude wasn't through Dayton and he went to the brewery in Caramon Park. That's a decent one. That's kind of fun. It's and like time. the whole thing went through their entire process and how their whole entire building is set up and it had like the two main dudes from there talking about it and going, man. Have you ever been inside there? I have never been inside there. It's really cool. Uh, but uh, he was sit the like the main dude was sitting there talking about all this different shit, and I was just listening to like the level of detail he was going into with like talking about different bacteria and shit, things we know about now, like the main brewer and then whoever the other guy was. He had like a PhD in molecular biology or some oh, bullshit, and I was like, holy shit. And at one point in the episode, he's like, um, we're guys that make fires that on the side also make beer because apparently every single one of their beers there, they don't use any sort of gas fires to do any of their boiling. It's all wood fire stuff to oh, yeah. boil boiling. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, man, I've never been there. That place is like a half hour away. What the fuck is my problem? Well, when you don't associate it with a brewery because you're like, Carolina Park. Oh, it's just a fucking park. And it's, it's like a brewery and a place to go eat, and it's, it's I mean, like, I can't remember what time it's set in, but it's set in a time where, like, everybody's outfits don't have zippers and buttons. Haven't we talked about this before? We have. Yeah, he, he was sitting there talking, they said, since you mentioned that, it was uh, right at the beginning of, quote, the industrialization of, like, making beer in general. 
uh, like they had like a little thing they're talking about. Basically, all their ingredients and everything they do, they're trying to do it as in like you know uh, the train just started coming through. So like they would have late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Only this stuff. Trains started coming through. You know they were getting shipments by river, and that was the kind of stuff they were trying to do all their stuff. By. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. So basically stuff that they would be able to get a hold of, and probably their foods too, anything that they would have been able to get a hold of. Um, they, like talked about not u- they talked about like not shit. using a lot of hops, because at that time hops wouldn't have been that common. Like a proper IPA, the reason that most of the hops are thrown in an IPA, you throw a shit ton of hops in there after the fact, it preserves the beer. And so they don't have a lot of hops in their stuff. I'm going, huh, what the fuck is my problem? Why haven't I been there? It's an interesting place. Easy to go to. Good for a date, or we could just go there sometime for a, like a thing. Ew, we're gonna go on a date. Ew. I met you and Francis. I'm gonna go on a date with you. We can do good, good okay, okay effect. The Carolyn Brewery is the other place. It's obviously at Carolyn Park. And for a date. It is. And then they go have some nice two, outside seats. Go on a date with my two favorite bestest ladies. Yeah, that. Oh yeah, and we can do that too. Well, then we could do that. We could go there, eat and drink, and then go to OK Effect. Or we could go to OK Effect, and then like if we have a whole lot there, then we can just probably take an Uber and split the ride to the other place. Or I don't know if one of us can drive, no big deal. Yeah, so we yeah. can get food and like a flight there. Just Uber right there. Yeah. Uber to the place mm-hmm. from where. You're probably wrong that I was closest. I'd be like almost expensive at that point. Oh yeah, I don't know how much. Oh god. We can find a babysitter. It's it's probably like I make. So if let's say if they're highway miles, because then it's like the miles and time. It seems like I'm making more. So I make almost a dollar per mile. I make sixty percent of whatever anybody pays. So if we drive like fifty miles. They're going to be paying probably like a $90 trip. Now we just need to find a sober babysitter. I guess.